Hello everyone, welcome back to Zeman Outdoors. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the Camp Park T30 trail camera. So I started buying the Camp Park trail cameras about a year and a half, two years ago um, when I was just kind of looking for an entry level quality camera um, that would uh, you know, work with the elements that we are in, in here in Texas um, as well to be able to put a, a relatively inexpensive camera out in public land and if it does get stolen um, you know it's not as much as a heartache as uh, a 200 or 300 dollar trail camera is. Um, it's not cell cellular uh, so if you want something cellular I'd go a different route but for something that you can access or get to when you want this is a pretty good option. Uh, so that's a little bit about the camera. So the specs on this, um, it's a 1080p video. It's 14 megapixel shot. Um, it has a 2.4 inch uh, LCD display on the camera. And um, that was one of the big things that I liked when I was buying the cameras. I kind of wanted something that helped with setting up as well as you could access the camera without having to get a computer or something like that. Um, you know, you could just walk up before, right before a hunt and go check to see what, what's been on the camera. And if there hasn't been much on there, you can go find a different spot or um, whatnot. So that was a big plus to this camera. It has a 0.3 to 0.5 second trigger time. Um, I, I've noticed it is pretty quick. I can't verify uh, if that's 100% accurate, but it does seem to have a pretty quick pickup. Um, the batteries, uh, it says it's an eight month uh, standby time. So I've noticed that with about uh, 500 to 1,000 pictures a month, it can last two to three months pretty easily. Um, and that's quite a few pictures on a trail camera. So I think the battery life is actually pretty good on these cameras. Um, so the temperature range, it can operate from negative 20 Celsius, which is 4 or negative 4 Fahrenheit, up to 60 degrees Celsius, which is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so I don't have any issues being in Texas with the heat. It's not going to get up to 140 here. And definitely is not getting down to negative 4 um, either. Um, Another thing that I like to has uh, three sensors, um, two on the side, so it can do a 120 degree range, and then one in the middle. And you can choose to set the two on this side, shut them off, um, if you're trying to just get something straight in front of you, uh, and you don't want some branches or something on the sides. Um, another thing that I liked is it's IP66 waterproof rated which the 66, the first six stands for the dust rating. Um, it's completely dust protected, so it's sealed, no issues with that. Um, the, six, the second six is the protection of water, uh, which is protects against high pressure water jets. Um, so this can take some, uh, some pretty good storms and, and still handle it and be good to go, um, which I liked a lot. Because uh, where I'm at in Texas, we can have some hurricanes, we can have tornadoes, all sorts of stuff so it's it can stand up to the test um, in all the elements so let's start uh, going through the unboxing here so you open it up you know it seems to be packed pretty pretty well it's not you know doesn't move packed in there nicely um, on the top you had the T30 trail camera user manual, um, different languages, talks all about the different options, things like that. Uh, the next one was the T30 simple operating instructions. So it's just a little pamphlet to quickly set up your camera um, without having to go through the entire user manual. Um, and then Camperk usually puts in a little surprise uh, pamphlet here. Um, and so if you go do a review, um, it says just an honest review, so if you don't like it, you know, it doesn't matter. If you do like it, great. Um, but if you do a review and have like a picture or something attached to it, they'll give you a, uh, choice of a free SD card, um, micro SD card, and 
SD card reader or um, a USB or phone SD card reader. So pretty cool option. So you can you know buy this and get a free SD card with it to be able to use it. Um, so then the camera. We'll go into the accessories here. So first we'll talk about the strap. Um, it's about a one inch strap, you know, has just a plastic uh, buckle on the end. Uh, I haven't had any issues with this wearing down or breaking or coming loose. Um, it's not super heavy duty, but you know, I, where I've had it, there's cattle and I've had cattle bump into it. Um, we've had storms. It's been out there for a year and a half and it's still held strong. Um, haven't had issues with that. And then it comes with a, a little mounting plate if you want to mount it somewhere else and not strap it to a tree. Um, and then the screws to be able to mount it. Uh, and then the mount itself to be able to connect it to the camera. It also comes with a, a little cable for charging or pulling the pictures off without pulling the SD card out. So here's the camera. You've got your two side sensors here, and then your front sensor, your camera, your IR. Um, so if you open it up, you see the L, uh, LCD screen that I have here. Uh, pretty basic setup simple buttons, um, a little note on kind of a how to, have, you know, memory card formatting, uh, just kind of a little starter guide. And what's nice is it has a little uh, cord connected to the battery thing so you can easily open and close the batteries. Um, it takes eight AA batteries. Uh, the micro SD card goes in here at the bottom. Uh, and I can show you that a little bit closer when we go through the setup. So that's the camera, um, and now we'll go through the setup. All right, so I figured I'd just kind of show you a close-up view of what comes in the box. This is the pamphlet for the free SD card and SD card reader. Your simple operating instructions. Your user manual. And again, here's the strap. your mount, cable, the screws for the mount, and the attachment to the camera and the mount. So here's a close-up of the camera. You can see it, it holds pretty tight, so we'll open it up here. the before you start instruction that I mentioned previously. All right, so let's put some batteries in it. Alright, so I have batteries in it. To turn it on, you have this thing at the bottom. If you just move it over one spot, it's your setup. If you move it over to the second spot, it's your operation. So we'll go back to the setup here. Alright, so it doesn't really let you do anything until you put an SD card in it. So we'll get this SD. Again, like I mentioned, it's the micro SD card. So it's kind of a little bit of pain to deal with, but you can see there's the slot. It should click in. So now it's a uh, 
good, says ready to go. Let's so go to the menu. Let me zoom in here a little bit. So you have the mode, which can be camera, video, or camera plus video. So we'll just leave it on camera for now. Photo size. So one con here is I like doing the three burst photos. And to do that, you actually have to have the five megapixels, not the 14. If you do eight, you can do two burst. If you do 14, you can only do one. Um, so for now, I'll leave it on five. Video size, I do 1080p. Again, the number of pictures, I like to do three photos. The video length can be anywhere from 10 seconds to 10 minutes. You can do five minutes, three minutes, or anything below. So I usually keep it on 10 seconds. And then the interval, that's the time between each set of pictures. Um, so if you want it to snap pictures quickly after the next, the first set, you know, you can shorten it. Um, I usually keep it on 30 seconds so I don't end up with a ton of photos. There's a time lapse option. I haven't really tested that yet. Um, time stamp, I usually keep that on so it shows on the pictures. Um, time switch. So this is if you want to, instead of set it up on motion, you can say anywhere from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. I want it to be on, otherwise shut it off. Um, so that's kind of a cool option as well, it can save your battery. You can set a password, so if you're on public land, you can put a password in there so if someone does steal it, they don't have access to it. Um, so they have this option is serial number set. So if you wanted, to say you had 10 cameras on your property and you had named each location, you know, one through 10, you can go in here and call this one 001, 002, so on and so forth. I think it does four digits. That way each picture, it'll put that number on it. So if you, you know, are looking through your pictures, you can tell where it was taken. So then, like I said, your side um, PIR, you can shut those on or off. I usually leave them on um, unless I'm trying to just do something straight in front of you. Um, and like if you have branches on the side or something like that, I'll shut them off. Um, the sensitivity I keep on high. Language, format, so we'll go ahead and format the SD card. Let me go back to... So we just did that. You can go in here and set the clock, reset to default, auto power off if it's not being used, you can set a time on that. I usually set the sound off, because when you're in the field and stuff, you don't want it to be making a bunch of sound. Do you want it to record volume or not? The level of the volume when you play back and then just the firmware version and things like that. Um, so then you can practice taking pictures by taking sh just pressing shot, it'll take a picture and it shows you what it took a picture of. So that's usually how I set up the camera. Um, it has a replay button. So you can go back and look through all the pictures you've taken. And then, let's go back. You can click to delete them, one or all pictures. So I'm going to delete all of them. It says we have nothing in there now. So then if you go to turn it on, you see this timer here? That gives you five seconds before it'll start clicking on motion. And so it's taking the picture now. And so that's, a, that's how I set up the camera. Um, one of the things that I do actually, and I'll show you now, um, I actually like to put the camera on because I want the highest quality picture. I'll put it on the 14 megapixel. So let's do that real quick. So I'll go camera plus video. 
I'll change the photo size to 14. I'll keep the video size at 1080. I'll do one picture and then a 10 second video. And so that's usually what I like to keep it on. The video does take up more space. So if you don't have time to go check your camera that often, maybe you just stick with pictures. Um, but I like to have a picture and a video. Um, and so we'll go outside and set this up and see how it turns out. All right, so we're outside here. Uh, I'm in my backyard, so I'm not able to be out at the property right now. Um, but so we'll, we'll do some testing. You all know, walk by it. I'll have my dog walk by it at, at day, night. We'll take some pictures and videos. Um, so I can show you all those pictures and, and videos and the quality um, of the, the camera. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set it up and kind of show you the process I go through when I put up a trail camera and set it up. Um, and then if I get a chance later this week or next, if I go out to the property, I'll set it up out there and I can send some pictures of animals and do an update on this as well. All right, so I've got my strap. They give you a pretty long strap, which is nice. Um, you know, if you don't think you'll need it that long, you can always cut it down a little bit. So I usually like to set the camera about five or six feet off the ground. It kind of just depends uh, what you're trying to get and, and how close to the camera you want to get pictures of. Um, you can set it up higher and kind of just angle it down if you want to do that. Um, so I'll just go ahead and set this up. So you can see I've got it set up here. Uh, sometimes if I want it to be angled down, I'll grab like a you know a stick or a twig or something and, and I can put it back behind on the top side. Um, Retighten it and you can see it's got you know a slight angle down here. Um, and so I'll show you kind of the setup mode which is Pretty cool because you can actually test uh, the sensors and, and where it actually picks you up at. Uh, so I'll zoom in a little bit so you can actually see the LEDs change as I walk by it. Uh, but you'll see these LEDs here. Uh, red means the front sensor picked you up. And then blue means the side sensors picked you up. Alright, so I'm going to put it into the setup mode. And then go ahead and close it. So as I walk by, you can see blue LED picking up, the red LED picking up. So you can see as I walk by it, you'll have the blue LED pick up first. There it is. And then as I walk in front of it, you can see kind of going blue and red. That's this, the middle and the side sensor picking up. And I'll walk on this side of it, and you can see the blue picked up again. 
and it's picking me up over here. So you can get an idea of what your sensors are going to pick up um, by just kind of walking around it. Um, and then another thing I like to do, is you can kind of, it's a little tougher to do, but you can kind of get an idea of where, you know, your picture is going to be uh, and at what angle it's pointing down by looking at the camera. Um, and just make sure it's in a good spot. And you can, you know, turn it on. You got about five seconds and you'll see this red light flashing. So that's giving you five seconds to close it before it'll take a picture. And so usually I like to just walk by it and let it take a, a picture and a video. All right, now we're back inside. I've taken a look at the pictures um, and I'll show them up here on the screen as we talk about them. Uh, so as far as picture quality, the daytime pictures, as you can see, I think are actually pretty crisp and clear. Um, the daytime video is a little grainy, but I mean, I think for what you need it for, what you're trying to get out of it, um, it does the job. And then the nighttime pictures uh, are pretty good. It doesn't look like I got a very good close-up. Um, the trigger speed and, and reaction on it were pretty quick, so it was hard to get around and get a good picture of it. Um, and then the video is pretty similar. Uh, you know, you can see what you're looking at. I, I think it's it's pretty good for public land use. You know, it's not going to be your highest quality trail camera footage, but for a price of about fifty dollars, uh, I think it sure beats paying two or three hundred dollars. Um, so the trigger speed is seems to be pretty good and the sensitivity seems really good um, as soon as i was walking out my back door it was picking up so it was clearly catching me right away um, as soon as there was any motion um, and then the battery life you know i didn't go through it and leave it out there um, because i wanted to get a video out the door but like i mentioned before i haven't had issues with battery life it seems to last two to three months pretty easily with a lot of pictures. Um, so if you're going out scouting or, or to your property every two to three months, I don't think you'll have any issues with that. And again, you can add a solar panel. Camp Park has their own option um, or you can find a different solar panel that works with it as well. Um, as far as the quality of the design, you know, it, I think it's pretty heavy duty. Um, it doesn't feel all that heavy duty, but the plastic seems to be pretty hard. Um, again, like I've mentioned, the cattle have come up to it, hit it, bumped it, moved it, had no issues. It still works fine. Um, it, it's withstood the elements, rain, heat, cold. Um, you know, it doesn't get quite as cold here, but it's, I've had them in probably about 20 degrees, 30 degrees. Um, but I don't, doubt that it'll, it'll work at, at lower uh, temps than that. Um, so I'll put a link to this exact camera. They have other camera options out there as well. They have uh, some Wi-Fi ones so that you can connect with your phone. Um, I haven't really worked with those that much. Uh, I may do a review on it a little bit later once I've, I've done um, some work with, with that specific camera. Um, so the pros of this camera that I really like. Um, the LCD screen I think is very beneficial, beneficial to have. Um, the price point I don't think you can beat for what you're getting. Um, you know the the menu, the ease of use, I think it's pretty straightforward to set up. Um, the biggest con that I have with it again will be the micro SD card and how it fits into that slot, getting it in and out is, is a little bit of pain. Um, but other than that, I don't really have any major issues with this camera. Um, so again, like I said, I'll put a link uh, below in the description so you can go check this specific camera out. Um, I guess let me know if you've used this camera, if you've used any of the Cam Park trail cameras before. Um, I'm curious what y'all's thoughts are. If uh, you've had any issues with them, um, what you think of the quality versus other more expensive cameras, um, or if you have a, a different budget camera that you like to use uh, that you think may be a little bit better than this, send me a message or put it in the comments and, and I can take a look at it. Uh, I could do a review on it if you want me to do that, that as well. 
because um, I'm all about trying new things, and especially if it's a better bang for your buck than this camera, I, I would be willing to try that. Um, if you have any questions or comments about this, just let me know. I, I can answer any of your questions, concerns, things like that. Again, like I've said, I've been using these for about two years, um, so I, I don't think I will have any issue answering any questions or concerns. Uh, I've probably run into most of the issues that you would run into as well. Um, so then my next video that I'm going to do, I will do a do-it-yourself archery target. I think there's been a lot of questions and, and comments about how to do that. I, I think size, having a bigger target for a beginner is something that's a, a big deal. You know, all these targets you can buy are pretty small typically, you know, 24 inch or so bag targets, block targets. Um, the block targets, you know, are hard to pull arrows out. So I think that's what I'm going for is a, a bigger target. I'm looking at a 36 by 36. And then I want something that's easy to pull arrows out. And that's going to hold up over time. You know, I shoot about 50 shots a day. And so I've torn up my block target. I've torn up the bag target a little bit. You know, they still work, but arrows are kind of penetrating through them a little bit more and, and hitting the wall and, and the stuff behind it. Um, they're not going all the way through, but, you know, it, it's still an issue that bothers me. So I want to test this out. And, and so I'll do a video of how I build that. Um, I'll test it out in the video. And then I'll probably do a follow-up a month after that as well to uh, show how it's held up. So if you're interested, please subscribe, hit the bell notification so that you can see when my videos pop up. And hope to see you all later. Thanks.